Hey friends, piggybacking off the last video I made on modulation versus automation, in this video we're going to take a more creative look at automation tricks you may not have tried before. There are timestamps down in the description if you want to skip around the video, and as always, if Ableton is your thing, it's my thing too, so make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when new videos come out. Alright, let's do this. Okay, so in this first example I've just got a wavetable sweep, it sounds like this. It's got some stereo information, but we could make this a lot more fun by using the saturator. Now a lot of people will use saturator and they'll leave it on a static setting, but saturator sounds incredible if you modulate it. Take a listen to this. We can hear that saturators added some really awesome top end harmonics. We can also hear that there are shifting harmonics in the mid range kind of moving around. So let's figure out how we can do this. I'm going to go ahead and do this from scratch. So I'll grab a saturator and drop it in. Okay, so for saturator to do its thing, you've got to drive the clipping stage. And in this case, we're going to choose the medium curve clipping stage. You can choose any one of these and they'll all sound different. We're going to go with medium curve. And what we do is we need to drive the signal into the saturator. Now, if I were to just modulate the drive, this is going to get really loud. So what I'll do is I'll click on any parameter I want to automate and I'll start here and I'll go ahead and drive it into this. So I'm going to go ahead and add, let's, let's add yeah, a full 30 decibels. Now what's gonna happen is, is as I do this, this is gonna get real loud. You can see that not even going all the way up to here, we're already up into clipping. So whenever you're doing this kind of action, you also need to automate the output, okay, the output level down as you add drive in or else you're just gonna clip. So I'll go ahead and do that. I'm gonna do the opposite. So now we get something like this. And that's already really interesting to listen to. We're adding harmonics. As the drive goes up, we're turning the output down so that we get about the same level, okay? Now, the next thing we can do is we can look at this pre and post filter. So the pre filter is called bass. And as you move it to the left, you get more of the low end to come through. And as you move it to the right, more of the low end is brought into the clipping stage. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go a little bit to the right and add more and more low end to the clipping. So I'll go ahead and start here and I'll move this up just a bit so that we get something like this. Take a listen. Cool, that sounds pretty great. Now this is the post filter. So this is a filter that happens after the clipping stage. And what we can do is we can go ahead and move this depth knob around. And as I move it up, take a listen. Right? So this might be fun to kind of move around a little bit faster. So maybe we'll do something like this, something like this, move it around. We'll make it more dramatic by pulling the bottom and top up. You can always select automation and do this trick where you're making it more intense by pulling the bottom. See those little squares? Let's take a listen to this now. Now the fun of this trick is that now I can try different clipping algorithms and get different sounds. Let's try sinoid fold. <laughs> oh, yeah. All kinds of wackiness. So try to automate your saturator. It's really fun. Let's move on to the next example. Okay, so in this next example, we're going to do a little bit of pitch scratching, kind of like vinyl scratching. So I'm going to go ahead and record my voice. Hello, hello. So here's my voice right here, and I can go ahead and drag this into a blank MIDI track. And what we'll get is a simpler. Now what I want to do is I want to turn this into a sampler. So what I'll do is I'll right click, and I'll, I'll click on Simpler to Sampler. So now I'll just go ahead and drag this first playhead, and now I can play on the keyboard my voice. Hello, 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 hello. Right? So now I have my voice, and I'm just going to drag this up here. And now in this track, we have a drum loop. So let's go ahead and loop this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just record some rhythmic playing of this sample of me saying hello. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, 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 hello. Okay. <laughs> now of course what I'm trying to simulate here is somebody scratching on vinyl. What's cool about Sampler is they've added some smoothing to the transposition. So go ahead and listen to what happens when I move this transposition around. <laughs> Hello. 
right? <laughs> so what I can do is I can just go ahead and record this automation, this performance, right? So what I'll do is I'll turn off the arm of this track and I'll just go ahead and make sure that my automation arm is turned on right here and I'll just go ahead and, and automate this. Take a listen. And so now you can see I recorded the automation in here. Now we get... <laughs> so yeah, you can go hog wild with this stuff. You could record anything that you have and just mess with the transposition and you get this kind of scratching effect, right? Cool, so another thing you can do with Sampler is you can use its internal oscillator. So what I've done is I've just dropped the sample of this drum beat into Sampler. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the oscillator for now and just listen. So this is just the standard sample dropped into Sampler. Right, so that's just the drum loop. Now, listen to what happens when I turn on this oscillator. <laughs> Pretty wild, right? So let's go ahead and do this from scratch. I'll grab a fresh sampler, and what I'll do is I'll drag and drop that drum beat into there. And so now, if I play middle C, I get but you can hear it's pretty quiet. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and turn the volume up to zero. So we get a full. So next I'll go ahead and turn on this oscillator. Okay, now if I just play this, take a listen. I can't hear any difference, right? Even though I've turned the oscillator on, there's no difference. You need to turn the volume up, take a listen. Now listen to how this FM, basically what we're doing is we're frequency modulating the drum beat, okay? So listen to how different it sounds depending upon where the volume is set. So if I play it down, if I have it down low, it sounds like this. But if I have it up high, it sounds like this. So what we can benefit from is just by doing a little bit of automation here. So we'll go ahead and automate this up and take a listen. <laughs> right? Maybe we'll... Move it around a bit. Okay, so another thing we can do is we can actually change the pitch of the oscillator. At this moment, we just have it on one static setting. So if we move it around, it'll sound really cool. So we're gonna turn on the fixed mode, okay? And what we'll do is we'll automate the actual frequency of the oscillator. So we're just gonna move this around a bit, see what we get. And if you go really high, you get these crazy pitches, right? So we're going to move this around and maybe make it go a little bit higher, maybe right at the beginning. Now, you can also change the oscillator itself. You can change what waveform it's making. So let's try saw and see what happens. So yeah, there's a lot to explore with the oscillator in Sampler. Okay, so moving on to the next example, here's that same beat, but it's in MIDI. Take a listen to how it ends. Whoa. Now how is this done? So what I have is I have a delay here, okay? We're gonna go ahead and build this effect from scratch. I'm gonna cut this delay out. This is just the Ableton delay. So we're just using a delay to simulate what it's like for a vinyl to slow down or a tape deck to lose batteries, right? So what we need to do is we need to unsync the delays, okay? And we're going to turn them all the way down to as low as we can get them. At this point, it's one millisecond. We don't need any echoes, so we're gonna turn the feedback down and we'd like to not change the EQ, so we'll turn the filter off, right? Final thing we'll do is we'll turn up the dry wet so that this is a 100% wet signal. Now listen to what I can do. I can make some pretty wacky sounds, right? But what I can do is I can just automate this time at the end to make it so that at the end of this clip, we just have a vinyl slowing down, right? So take a listen. <laughs> okay, so moving on, I've got a electric instrument playing a chord and it just sounds like this. I'll turn off this echo. Now, what I've done is I've automated echo. So Ableton Echo, I've automated a couple parameters here. We've got feedback automated. Take a listen to what this effect does. So 
So what I've done is I've automated the feedback on Echo. And what you can do is you can simulate some really interesting old school kind of like Roland Space Echo kind of sounds by messing with the feedback and making sure it doesn't totally take off, but letting it take off a little bit. This is a trick I use all the time and I love it. So let's go ahead and build this from scratch. I'm gonna grab an Echo. So right off the bat, when we listen to this, that's not quite the kind of sound. I'm looking for that, that um, straight up 16th notes here or eighth notes here. So now we get this. I'll go ahead and delete my old automation here on all these parameters. And so looking back at feedback, what I need to do is I need to be careful with this, okay? If you, if you go above 100%, you're gonna get some really crazy stuff to take off. So this is what's so great about automating this feedback feature. I'll make it kind of climb up to a point where it really takes off, and then I'll control it by bringing it back down. So take a listen to this now. So we can hear it got kind of more intense and then it got back. So what you can do in order to control this is kind of just experiment with where it's gonna take off, how long it's gonna be up high, and then bringing it back down. So now that I've moved this dot over here, it's gonna raise the feedback a little bit faster. And we can take a listen to this now. We can hear that there's a little bit more distortion in that signal, and that's a really that's a really pleasing thing. If we want to increase that distortion, we could either keep moving this over and make the feedback happen sooner, or we could just add a little bit more input. So maybe I'll add a little bit more input to this and see what happens. Beautiful sounds. Now the next thing we can do is we can automate the modulation, okay? So we can modulate the filter frequency of this echo. So maybe what we'll do is we'll dial in this filter frequency a bit and make it a little bit more fun. Now, any resonance that you add is gonna add gain. So I might need to turn my input down. I'm gonna add a little bit of a resonant hump to the lower frequency and one to the top frequency. I'll go ahead and move these down a bit and move them around. And let's take a listen to what we have now. Love it, so beautiful. Now we're gonna move over to modulation and we'll go ahead and modulate this filter. What this will do is it will take two different LFOs that are slightly out of phase and kind of move the EQ of the left and right channels. So what I'll go ahead and do is I'll start it at zero and I'll move it up over the course of this delay. Let's take a listen now. <laughs> now, if you really want to get wacky with it, you can do a little bit of delay modulation, but this is going to throw the delay time out of sync. But it could be fun if we do just a little bit. <laughs> okay, so in the next example, Hybrid Reverb, Ableton's new reverb has a really interesting feature called Send. So what you can do is you can, instead of having the reverb on the whole time, this reverb is sitting on this track and it has been sitting on this track the whole time. If I play it over here, for example, even though reverb is sitting on this track, nothing's happening. What's interesting about this is you can use the send knob to add reverb bursts to the drum loop, right? So I've just put a couple automations here for the send knob to make snare bursts, right? So it sounds like this. <laughs> now this is fun, but another thing we can do is we can automate the size parameter. Now I know that the snare burst is right here, right? But what I can do is if I decrease the size, what will happen is the pitch will go up. Take a listen. <laughs> now inversely, if I want to do it the other way, I can make the size go, make it bigger, and that will make the pitch go down. So take a listen to this. Now, you, now that's really extreme. You can be very subtle with this and have some really interesting sounds. So I'll just make it change 10% from this snare blast here. 
<laughs> you can get some really uh, interesting or cinematic sounds in that way, right? So yeah, that's just a real quick trick you can do with hybrid reverb. Really interesting stuff there. Okay, so moving on, take a listen to this. <laughs> so what's that? Well, that's actually a vocoder. What I've got here is I've got this little vocoder profile that I've made. I made it eight bands long, and what I'm automating is the release time, okay? So let's go ahead and build this from scratch. I'll just grab another vocoder. Now, running drums through vocoder is always fun. It's just good, clean fun. Take a listen. What I'll go ahead and do is I'll maybe make this, uh, I'll make this 16 long. And what's fun about this is these bands, these are all different bandpass filters that have different widths. What I can do is I can go ahead and just kind of make myself a nice little fun curve. Okay, so now that I've got kind of a sound that I want, I might click on Enhance just to get a little bit more brightness out of this. Now what's happening is Vocoder is taking that drum beat that I have, which sounds like this, right? What it's doing is it's adding a little bit of release time to these different filters here. So each one of these stands for a filter, right? And what I can do is if I automate the release time, I can get some really interesting rhythmic results. Right? Really interesting sounds. Now what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and record this. Right? <laughs> so I was just moving the release knob right around and you've got this automation now. And so another thing we can do is we can automate the formant. So the formant is just basically shifting the frequencies of these bandpass filters up and down. And so we can get these different kind of sounds with it. So I'm going to go ahead and just do that too. <laughs> That's pretty cool. And then depth, what this does is it controls how much of an effect these filters have over the sound. Okay, so I'll go ahead and record this as well. <laughs> and of course, you can always uh, dial back the dry wet if you want some of the original beat to come through and we can kind of control how much of this is in here. So yeah, automating vocoder release time is a great way to get some rhythmic variation on your stuff. Okay, so next let's take a listen to this. This is just a riser sound that I made. It sounds like this. Right, and so the way that I did this is I just used a reverse pitch envelope. Just turned on the pitch envelope in operator and just held a note out, right? So we get that classic sound. Now check this out. What I've done is I've mapped this LFO to the pitch of this first operator, okay? So now we get this sound. <laughs> and this makes the this riser sound a lot more interesting. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna build this from scratch. I'm gonna cut this out. We're gonna add a brand new operator. And so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna turn up the second oscillator so we get that kind of FM sound. We'll make it come in over time. And so now we get... We can hear those harmonics being added. Maybe we'll turn up the chorus. There we go. Let's turn on our pitch envelope, okay? And we'll make it go all the way up to all the way down and we'll make it reverse. So now we're gonna go up and pitch. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab an LFO. Now I think what folks mostly do with LFOs is they set the LFO and they forget about it. They don't mess around with the LFO at all and that's it. The great thing about LFOs is that their parameters can also be automated. So the first thing I want to do is I want to map the LFO to the pitch of this oscillator and we'll turn it on fixed mode. So I'll click on map and I've clicked on this frequency and you can see that it's moving up and down, right? So we don't need that much depth. So maybe the first thing I can do is I can modulate the depth, okay? So at the very lowest setting, nothing changes. We're just going up in pitch like we were, like we were before. But if I make the depth go up over time, we get this. <laughs> and we can hear what, what, what you're hearing right now is the relationship, the FM relationship between these two oscillators. So you get that classic kind of like radio tower kind of ring modulation kind of sound, right? And so the next thing we can do is we can mess with the rate. So if I turn the rate way down, I'll start with the rate down low and I'll move it up high over time. So we're building up energy for our riser. So take a listen to this. Woo! 
<laughs> Pretty interesting stuff. Now, another thing you can do is you can modulate modulators, okay? So another thing we can do is turn on the LFO, and this is the pitch of the entire operator, right? So what I can do is I'll maybe move this back here. I'll bring the rate down, and what I'll do is I'll use this LFO to affect the rate of this LFO here. I'll go ahead and modulate the amount so that the amount over time changes. Let's take a listen to this first. <laughs> That's already pretty weird, but what we can do is we can use this LFO and we can go ahead and map this. Now you can use LFO to map multiple parameters. You click on this guy and all of a sudden, look, you've got eight more destinations. So I'll map this to the rate of this LFO. <laughs> now this is gonna get wacky. And so now we get, <laughs> so never forget that you can always modulate your modulators, right? Okay, so in this last example, we have some MIDI automation, and a lot of folks don't realize that you can automate parameters within MIDI devices. And so something that I've done here, which is pretty crazy, is I've got a simpler running this beat right here. So it's this beat. But I'm embellishing it with this simpler set to slice mode. So take a listen to what this is. Now this whole situation might be a bit confusing, but let's build it from scratch. I'll go ahead and just delete all this stuff. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab, this is just a recording of the drum beat right here, take a listen, right? I'm gonna go ahead and grab this and drag this into this track. So we get a simpler, okay? Now the next thing I wanna do is I wanna turn it on slice mode, okay? And I'll bring the volume back up to zero. So now if I play on my keyboard, It appears that C2 is our lowest note right here, right? So I can play on up, and we get those different slices. So the first trick to this is we're going to use MIDI effects, and we're going to go to the arpeggiator. So this is a pretty simple effect. If I just play a chord, it's going to play the different slices, right? But what's fun about this is if I change this to gate mode, okay, I, can, I now have control over how long these slices are held out. So if I play it low, I get... If I turn it up high, I get. So maybe the first thing we could do with this automation is move this gate around. I'll turn on my pencil tool and just kind of move this around for the fun of it and do different gate lengths. Maybe we'll get some fun different sounds with this. Okay, so what I've done is I've recorded this chord. Take a listen. Right? Now, another thing I should do is I should turn this up on, up to sixteenths so we can get these different kind of sounds here. Now, this is still kind of boring, right? We're not having as much fun as we could. So something else we could do is we could reach for pitch. Now what this will do is this chord that I've recorded here, just this easy, really quick C minor chord that I've got here, what it'll do is it will start to move which samples are being played back, right? Because the arpeggiator, all that it's doing is it's choosing notes that are going into Simpler, and Simpler is interpreting those notes as different slices. So what I'll do is I'll just make this go up over time. So we'll scroll down to where this pitch starts. Maybe I'll expand this to make this a bit easier to see. And now we can take this pitch and we'll start it from zero and we'll move it all the way up. Now take a listen to this. <laughs> right? Now when we play this with the other beat, take a listen. Now you can hear all these flams, right? That's kind of weird. Well, the reason is, is because my beat is swung. So if I go to the groove right here, I can turn this to 16th swing, and this will make a lot more sense. Now you can hear some of that comb filtering in there, and that's because similar samples are being played over top of each other. So what I've done is I went ahead and just added this flanger here, and I've turned the amount down, right? So we're hanging out at these lower times, and I've turned time up so we get kind of that like cool like delay kind of uh, robot kind of sound. Take a listen. Maybe we'll flip it over to phaser and see what happens. 
So when you're doing this kind of action where you're taking a sound, right, and you're slicing it up over top of the original sound, you're going to want to change uh, some of this stuff so that it sounds cooler, right? Cool, so if there are non-traditional automation destinations that you use all the time, I always get inspired by discovering them, so please leave them down in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you next time, everybody. Thanks for watching.